Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Jamie Underwood, Director of Marketing Communications at Alertus Technologies. Today's session will provide an Alertus Emergency Mass Notification System Overview, including a look at one of our flagship products, the Alert Beacon. We ask that you please hold all questions to the end of the webinar. However, feel free to type any questions in the chat box during the presentation, and we'll be sure to come back to those during the Q&A at the end of the session. This webinar is being recorded, so please email marketing at alertus.com if you're interested in receiving a video recording of today's webinar. I would now like to turn it over to today's webinar presenter, Alertus's National Sales Director, Ryan Hopley. All right. Thank you very much, Jamie, and uh, welcome, everyone, to the uh, monthly webinar series. This month, we'll be focused on the Alert Beacon. This is a key innovation for Alertus. Uh, this is the way a lot of people recognize Alertus. It's just one component of, of the Alertus system for a, a multimodal mass notification system for your, your organization, but it's a critical component. Uh, it solves a lot of challenges uh, related to areas that you don't have anywhere to notify, uh, areas that you've got special challenges when you're testing your notification uh, systems and, and solutions, uh, and you find that there's holes in that. The Alert Beacon works very well. We'll also talk a little bit about how it fits into the codes. Uh, this is a uh, device that gets mounted in your building. It flashes sounds, gets your attention. It provides compliance with the NFPA uh, building codes. And then also uh, go through and, uh, and do a demo, talk a little bit more about uh, some of the controls you have at the Alert Beacon. Again, as I mentioned, this is unique to the Alert solution. This is a, a patented solution uh, that, uh, that no others uh, provide on the market. <clears throat> If, you're first, if this is your first time coming to these uh, monthly webinars, we'll generally do a uh, background and overview of the Alertus notification system, some challenges, talk a little bit about the codes, and then we'll get uh, more into a, a solution overview and then focus on the alert beacon. We then end that with a, uh, a demo where we go through and, and do some activations. Now, uh, I'll show you some of the, uh, the quick activations, the presets, uh, just like with our, uh, our last session, which we covered the uh, mobile, I'll also do an activation from the mobile interface that we've got up on the screen. But then also I'll, I'll dig deeper into the, uh, the customization of how you uh, do notifications using the Alert Beacon, really show you some of the, the fine-tuned controls you have of that, where you can, call, you can select the tone, uh, the, uh, the level of, uh, of the volume. You could even uh, select between red and green lights, uh, those kind of things that you can customize per activation and create profiles ahead of time so that when you activate, the beacon's going off appropriately. Certain emergencies, maybe you just want it to flash and display the message. Others, uh, where you need to uh, alert people in, uh, immediately, a tornado alert, those kind of things, you may want to go, that thing to go off at, at full blast at 100 decibels. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more detail of the user interface and how easy it is to control and configure uh, those notifications and those uh, profiles for your system. So Alertus is a uh, pioneer in integrated audiovisual facility alerting for all hazards. Uh, we focus on your buildings delivering messages to your facilities so that anybody that's in those buildings receive that message. Uh, we were founded in 2002 after a tornado ripped through the University of Maryland, killing two students. Uh, the founders were students at the time. Uh, I myself, I was a student as well. I was over on the other end of campus in the business school, no idea a tornado came through. Well, neither did the, the two students that were in a portable classroom. Uh, so the founders got together, uh, started with the Alert Beacon, really kind of built the, the concept. It has since expanded that to multimodal network-based mass notification that's installed in hundreds of campuses, uh, military bases, other large facilities, uh, corporate industrial, as well as the U.S. Capitol, where they use our, our system as a, for specialized automated alerting for threats related to September 11th type things. So, uh, the system is very flexible in environments, so uh, depending on what kind of uh, campus you, you need to notify, we're able to uh, solve those challenges. We're also headquartered in the D.C. area, so we work very closely with FEMA and a lot of the uh, standards coming out of uh, D.C. related to emergency broadcast, emergency messaging systems, coordination of communication uh, between state, local, municipal, and even the, the private sector where a lot of our systems are deployed. So uh, a quick overview on the use case, uh, you're probably looking at these things, uh, maybe you don't have certain components or maybe you have uh, components of these things that are available for your emergency notification uh, capability, uh, digital signage, uh, 
How do you activate? Do you have that available? Where do you have those? Think about that. Uh, what if you could activate those? No matter you know who runs that system, uh, no matter who administers it, who installed it originally, uh, be able to activate that consistently and effectively. How about your PA systems? How would you activate those? Do you have to send somebody to your PA system to activate that? Um, you know, is there are you you dependent on a, a trained individual? Maybe they're networked. Uh, you know, how do you how do you activate those very quickly and efficiently? Uh, you may have text and email solutions in place from service providers. We partner with the majority of those out there. Uh, that's a good first step, but you're really missing a, a huge group because there's a lot of challenges, as you know, uh, related to managing the contact information, make sure you have the right people there, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, VoIP phones, a lot of the uh, organizations have updated to uh, VoIP phones. These are on the network. There's a screen, there's a sounder. We can use that and activate that as part of your notification uh, network. Uh, maybe you've got that asset available to you. Outdoor speakers or sirens, um, you know, cable TV systems, and also uh, one that uh, not a lot of people think of, but many of the fire alarm systems are going in nowadays with uh, sound and paging associated with them or a PA system. Uh, the codes allow you to uh, make an announcement over that PA system, but you know that that panel may be in the basement, may be inaccessible in a locked closet. Uh, you know, how do you activate that and really make it a, a part of your notification uh, process? And then furthermore, you know, how do you activate it instantly? So uh, a lot of organizations we talk to use the high water mark of active shooter. They, they determine that if they can activate a notification that's fast enough to save life and property and, and, uh, and give people uh, the appropriate time to react to a situ situation, that same system can be used for any number of alerts. So really, how do you activate all those assets we talked about within 30 seconds, not 30 minutes? Uh, when, you know, those emergencies, when seconds count, that's really where Alertus can help you as well as, like we'll talk about the Alert Beacon and other uh, hardware devices, we can really round out your notification uh, solution and then layer on the software endpoints uh, like desktop and those kind of things to give you a full notification to, you, to your facilities so that no matter who's there, whether they're visitors, contractors, employees, uh, people that just started uh, that you don't have in your database yet as a, for emergency notification, uh, you're going to get that message out to them and very efficiently. Uh, some challenges uh, that a lot of our customers face that you're probably going to recognize here. Uh, I'm going to kind of relate these a little bit more to the alert beacon uh, since this is the focus of this webinar. And kind of you can see how the alert beacon can fill into the, these things. But uh, when we talk about other things like our text-to-speech integration, desktop, and all those, you can see how layering these together would be very effective. So no uh, locations with no way to notify. Uh, this is a location where maybe you don't have computer desktop screens, you don't have uh, a, a concentration of those, digital signage, uh, maybe there's no PA system associated with that building. So how do you notify that location? I mean, today, and we've heard this from many, you know, we've got somebody with a bullhorn who runs down the hallways. You know that's, that's got a lot of holes in that. So with the, uh, the alert beacon, you can very cost-effectively retrofit those facilities, put alert beacons in key locations in hallways, common areas, high traffic areas, and then provide a very cost-effective install means for mass notification into those buildings with no way to notify. A building stop, not staffed 24-7, again, even if you have some of those things, if they're not uh, connected in the Alertus system, uh, you need some way to be able to activate that remotely. The alert beacon can be reactivated over the network. Uh, you can target specific locations, whether you have staff there or not. Um, if there's a, a threat to that facility, you can issue that threat from anywhere. Uh, next is loud environments. Uh, this is where the uh, you know a PA system or sound and paging really falls short because if you get up to 90 or 100 decibels, you just add more sound. You're not really actually going to hear an announcement or a speaker system. So you need some way to deliver the alert visually. Uh, so environments like uh, manufacturing, uh, those kind of things, uh, uh, where you need to provide an, a visual alert. The alert beacon is excellent for this. Uh, the flashing with red or green lights gets your attention and um, just human nature, when those things start flashing, it draws you in. You see the message flashing on the screen and you've got a visual indicator of what that message is. You can also um, plug in a uh, LED marquee to give yourself a larger form factor for, say, manufacturing for a loud cafeteria or uh, um, meeting area, something like that. So uh, the visual component's huge, uh, not only for overcoming loud, loud noises, but also uh, as part of the codes, 
having an audio visual component for uh, compliance for ADA accessibility, those kind of things are a big part of the codes. So again, uh, the alert beacon provides that capability and, and uh, compliance there. Uh, cell phones aren't allowed. We see this in a lot across either college campuses with labs where you can't take cell phones, uh, healthcare institutions where there's certain testing equipment, labs where you can't take cell phones as well. Even in manufacturing environments, uh, there's a safety hazard with walking around looking at your phone, obviously you trip on something. So a lot of times they've banned cell phone usage or maybe you can only use it in certain, certain areas of the manufacturing floor just for safety uh, record issue and issues. So, so there's a lot of different applications and if you're relying just on text and email to get to a phone uh, and there's areas that they don't have, you're not allowed to have phones or even cell coverage is weak, you've obviously got a challenge. So the alert beacon can be placed in certain areas um, that, that provide that notification in those, those locations that, that generally don't have cell coverage or uh, cell users uh, in that location. The last one, which is huge, is difficulty reaching visitors and contractors. You know, if, you're, if you need to keep a phone number for somebody, it's impossible uh, to keep track of who's on your campus, when they've wandered in, uh, what contractors are working that day. So you're really, really relying on the, the courtesy, you know, the word of mouth, which uh, you don't want to leave to choice or chance. Um, you could, uh, could place alert beacons throughout your facilities, especially in ones that, that have sparse coverage for other notification modes and uh, capture those uh, visitors, contractors, those kind of things. Uh, we've, uh, we've had a lot of success and we've got uh, users that have placed alert beacons and entrance, exits, hallways, that gets a lot of your, your, your uh, visitors. Uh, so if you're getting the message when you first enter a room, a building, you know whether the threat is in the building to turn around and get out or if the threat is outdoors and to get in the building, lock down, uh, you know, and, and take shelter. So. So that's an excellent use there. Another one is uh, loading docks are often frequented by delivery people, some of your, uh, your uh, employees. Uh, there's generally uh, not a whole lot of notification out that way. Uh, those kind of challenging areas that when you run your tests and you find that, hey, there was somebody in this part of my building, they heard it, but they didn't get the message because they, they couldn't get it through the uh, PA system or any other mode. An alert beacon can very quickly and easily be uh, configured and put in that location either a wired connection or wireless, which we'll get into a little bit more. So there's a lot of challenges that our customers uh, come across. Uh, a lot, a combination of our modes of notification solve that, but also uh, the alert beacon, uh, as you see, is, uh, is a good, uh, good uh, uh, tool to solve those challenges. A uh, quick update on the, uh, the codes and mandates I mentioned. Uh, within higher ed, if you're, you're a, a college or institution uh, like that, you're, you're bound the Clery Act to uh, provide timely notification. There's, uh, you know, some, if that's not provided, there's uh, fines and or uh, federal funding at risk. So those in higher ed know that very well. And we've been working with those customers for, for um, almost a decade now to solve all those challenges, which translates extremely well to the rest of the market. In the DOD, uh, there's a unified facilities criteria. This goes into much more detail. It isn't a law, but it's uh, been mandated by the Secretary of Defense that everybody on a military base be notified within 10 minutes of an incident. This is coming out of the, the Fort Hood incident. The uh, UFC really details how you would install emergency notification systems within <laughs> military buildings so that that notification can occur within 10 minutes. Uh, and, and again, uh, that, that doesn't, with the military, it doesn't say to you know, midshipmen or uh, or private phones, it says 10 minutes, period. And, uh, you know, alerted systems help, uh, work very well in the military to provide that because we're, we're notifying to their buildings, so we're getting everybody that's there, no matter whether they're on, on, on a list or not. And then lastly, what, what applies to a great majority of those on the line is NFPA. NFPA are the building codes uh, that uh, govern Mostly fire alarm and life safety within the build, within a building. So govern govern where you put the fire alarm strobes, the speakers, those kind of things. But there is one chapter in 2010 that was added for mass notification, which allows you to integrate the fire system with mass notification, including using those speaker systems and those kind of things. And then also takes the next step forward is it provides uh, some guidelines on how to implement mass notification using multiple modes of notification. As I mentioned earlier, audio-visual will touch, touch on uh, 
you know, the alert beacon is actually in the NFPA code book, in the handbook, as a, uh, as a device that uh, provides compliance there. So uh, codes are really starting to become a part of uh, the, the building and, and mass notification strategies you're building. So to bring all this together, Alertus provides a single point of activation, uh, and that could be a uh, web interface, that could be a mobile interface on your Apple or Android phone, that could be an a, uh, automated alert, or it could be an outside system like an access control system providing that act activation into the system. And lastly, um, another very popular one is a panic button. Uh, not every time you have time to log in these devices and, and uh, select your right message. If you've got a panic button to alert people, uh, that can be a, an instant silent notification for things like uh, disgruntled employee, front desk, uh, security, those kind of things. Uh, next, integrate with all notification assets, and we'll get into this. We uh, Beyond the alert beacon, we can integrate into things like digital signage, desktop, cable TV. So we can really bring a lot of the assets that you've already invested in into your notification strategy and capability for activation and do it very quickly. The last piece is filling in the gaps with innovative alerting endpoints. This is uh, the alert beacon and text-to-speech, panic buttons, those kind of things. The actual hardware devices that work in conjunction with the software that get, it, get deployed within your facilities. So combined, we can provide a full solution that can cover any kind of situation or location that you've got uh, within your within your facility or or, or your uh, your care. So here's a great way to summarize the notification endpoints that Alertus can provide. Uh, I'm not going to go into each and every one of them, but you've got the notification, whether it's automated, say a weather alert coming through uh, filtered through our uh, threat watcher, which is our business logic rules engine, uh, through the API, which is integrated with all our text and email uh, partners like Everbridge and SendWord Now and Rave and you know, there's there's a, t a number of those uh, which you can reference our website for integrations. But uh, that could be, if that's part of your process, that we could be downstream from that, or a lot of times we're upstream from that, where we can also trigger your uh, your text and email groups through those services. So that it provides one point of activation. You've also got a web console. So if you've got an operation center, you've got the web console, and you'll see that in the demo. The message goes out either wired or wirelessly. Many different ways. Uh, most popular is Ethernet, power over Ethernet to power and connect to the devices. You can also deploy uh, based upon Wi-Fi if you've got some very challenging facilities to uh, to wire, uh, and leverage those existing networks uh, to be able to cost effectively uh, retrofit your facilities. And then that message goes out to all different devices, and uh, some of them are network connected, and some of them are uh, are not network connected. In which case, we've got technology that provides. Things like our text-to-speech to connect to uh, sound and paging systems, your your fire alarm, your uh, outdoor notification siren, and high-powered speaker arrays, which alerts can also provide. Uh, but then also you've got network-based devices like the alert beacon, uh, de uh, uh, desktop, digital signage, cable TV. Is uh, the net message gets over to the cable TV system and integrates over the network. Um, over the internet, your uh, Alertus mobile app, which allows you to not only activate the system but also for your users to download the app and receive push notifications. So you can see the alert system, while we're famous for the alert beacon, we started out there, there's where, there's where the innovation was. The innovation is actually transformed to being able to provide the platform for activating very quickly and efficiently all notification assets you have, whether they're on the network or not, uh, in an efficient means uh, so that your uh, individuals within your building are notified very efficiently. So. Uh, you know, far cry from just uh, the, the the first idea of the alert beacon, uh, but that's kind of how we've uh, developed the system over the last 10, 15 years, uh, which is unique in the industry as well. So uh, to focus on the alert beacon, uh, alert beacon is a device that, that you place at about ADA accessible levels, uh, about 42 inches or so. Uh, they uh, network on the wall. Uh, they can either be mounted on the surface or uh, can be uh, flush mounted. Uh, into the wall, so any kind of environment, where either, whether it's drywall or or, uh, or uh, cinder block, those kind of things with conduit, you're able to mount that very quickly and efficiently. It's one line, uh, line or uh, just power to the device, so uh, power over Ethernet or Wi-Fi. And then the beacons uh, flash sound, so they've got eight flashing patterns, they've got eight uh, tones, uh, display the message, and uh, and also have uh, two different colors, so uh, red and green are the the, the standard colors. Red generally used for emergency, green for uh, an all clear or a, a less severe 
notification to get people's attention. Uh, these use cases, as I mentioned, entryways, hallways, high traffic areas, gathering areas, uh, any kind of locations where you, you don't have uh, a notification means, uh, say it's in a, a lab or uh, you know in a, on a loading dock, a remote part of your, your building that, that doesn't have notification but generally is frequented by individuals. A lot of different applications there for the, the alert beacon. Also, uh, it's a lot more cost effective than installing, managing, and maintaining a PA system. Um, the, uh, the devices are fully monitored. We'll get into a little bit more details there, but uh, uh, excellent way to uh, deploy mass notification to get started, and, uh, especially where you don't have anything uh, today. Uh, the alert beacon is designed to serve all of our customers, military bases, large facilities, uh, you know, that lack any kind of in-building notification system or need to be need to supplement the existing uh, modes of notification. As I mentioned, wall mount mounted, any type, type of walls, uh, right about uh, ADA accessible so that somebody that's uh, in a wheelchair can roll up and still be able to uh, to read the message very very clearly and efficiently. Uh, it flashes sounds, uh, captures the attention of building occupants at a distance, brings them in, they'll read that. Uh, and actually, there's an interesting story from one of our uh, uh, community college users in the Midwest, uh, when they first deployed our system, they wanted to see, you know, how does that really work? I mean, this is a new, fairly new concept to a lot of people. You know, you see a, a pull station on the wall, you know that's fire. If you saw the alert beacon for the first time, you know, how would somebody react? So what they did is they installed their first site, and uh, this person, IT person, had access to the uh, CCTV, the camera system. So they would just target one notification, you know, a uh, thank you for uh, viewing this message. This is just a test of our alert system. Uh, very, use a lower tone, you know, that kind of thing as not to, you know, overly, um, you know, panic somebody. And sure enough, uh, if there was a student standing there, he'd set it off. The student would look around, see it flashing, walk up, read it, and then walk, walk off or uh, continue on. Uh, it's just in human nature that when you see it flashing, uh, and if any of you have come by our booth at, at any of the trade shows which we attend, you know that flashing draws you in, and and the curiosity really gets you gets you there to to look at it and uh, read that message. So it's very intuitive uh, uh, for applying those. There there isn't special training you need to be able to put the alert beacon out and try to get people to read it or understand what it is. I mean, you know, you see that going off. There's something that says active shooter, you know people get the message. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can customize that display on what it says, uh, how to respond to it. So, you know, you see here we've got a tornado warning, and then the, the one below that's an all-clear issuing so that everybody knows that that, that warning is passed. Uh, and then lastly, uh, you can get the alert beacon either in uh, yellow or in white. Uh, yellow uh, stands out a lot if you want it to be noticed. Uh, it would be part of uh, kind of your PR campaign as well on uh, ensuring your uh, campus, either employees, visitors are safe. Or we've had other institutions that say, yeah, we want to make sure they're safe. Well, they'll, they'll see them, but we want it to blend into the walls a lot better. The white is a lot more inconspicuous, inconspicuous but obviously whenever it's activated, there's no, ex uh, no way to uh, ignore that uh, device going off. So key features, reliable. Immediate response, uh, it, it works over your network, so you're not relying on any of the cell towers or internet. Uh, you're using your local network to activate that. Uh, affordable, it's about a ninth the cost of con conventional voice PA systems and doesn't have reoccurring fees or, uh, or uh, maintenance re re, uh, associated with the PA systems. Uh, also, uh, it doesn't have this here, but it's fully monitored and supervised. So if you put a PA system in, You've got to generally, in, unless it's a very expensive system associated with your life safety system, which is constantly supervised, you've got to check on to that, do tests, those kind of things. Well, the alert beacon constantly provides uh, messaging back and, and its status so that you know that alert beacon's up, ready to receive a message at any moment in time just by checking in uh, on that. Uh, it's interoperable. You're able to activate the alert beacon for any kind of notification, uh, any kind of scenario with, that you program with the alert system. It's integrated with external devices, including LED marquees, panic buttons, text-to-speech, the fire alarm interface. And that's really key. The alert provides an interface to some of these other technologies that aren't connected to the network. It's got a network connection. It's constantly communicating back to the system. It's monitored. But we can then generate text-to-speech integrated with your fire panel onto that. We can uh, drive an LED marquee off of that. 
the alert beacon also, when you see in, uh, we'll go into the detail of what uh, inputs and outputs and, and things are in there, you'll see that there's uh, contact closure inputs and outputs. So that a contact closure is basically uh, an on-off switch. Uh, fire alarms are set that with contact closure, access control systems, door locks, all those kind of things. So you can start to see how the alert system can then trigger those systems, uh, gate systems to open or close, um, to automate some of these things, strobe, strobe light systems that you might have. Um, anything that, that is really a, an off-network type uh, traditional device, we can activate. And that, that gateway a lot of times is the alert beacon. So also being a display and uh, an audible visual enunciator type device, it's also a, a gateway to the network uh, and helps you to integrate with a lot of assets. And lastly, it's zonable. So we know exactly where that alert beacon is located, where it's connected to your network, and we can target messages as groups or even down to one individual alert beacon. Uh, so uh, it's very flexible in that means. Here with the, uh, the alert beacon, just to give you an idea, I, I talked a lot about what you see uh, to the front, the display, the toner, the, uh, the strobes, uh, the wall mount. The wall mount's very secure. You can have security screws. Uh, those, those devices have kind of a fire alarm type feel. So uh, very often do people uh, mess with those, touch those, just because they're, they've been conditioned uh, that, you know, hey, that might be part of the fire alarm. I know that's part of the notification system. I don't, I, I don't want to touch that. So generally we have good luck with uh, people not really messing with it, but it does have the security screws and is very uh, ruggedized so that uh, it, it will stand a lot of your environments. Uh, around to the back, you'll see some of the interfaces. You'll see the Ethernet connection. There's also the option for Wi-Fi. Uh, you can uh, add uh, onboard rechargeable batteries that constantly uh, recharge themselves and stay at a full charge uh, for any of your wireless uh, applications, those kind of things. And then that green bar across there allows, allows you to interface uh, power if you've got an external power support su supply that you're using. Uh, and also those inbound and outbound contact closures, so those uh, more traditional interfaces uh, we can wire to the nearest alert beacon. You can also pair uh, a uh, panic button with the alert beacon uh, to activate that, so you can put that side by side with the alert beacon uh, so that if there's an emergency that comes up, they can press that button uh, and activate any of the preset messages. Uh, there's just kind of an interesting thing to point out. There's some dip switches here. Those are used for various uh, things. You can either turn the uh, ability to silence the alert beacon off uh, or on. So if uh, a user was trained, they could walk up to the alert beacon, acknowledge it by pushing both of the buttons on the front, which you'll see whenever I do the demo. And you can either flip it so that it'll silence it, or you can flip it so that the, the message will continue so that somebody couldn't silence it, walk on, and the next person not hear the tone or something like that. Uh, one of the other dip switches is for when you uh, place the alert beacon in a, a combined space or area with very hard surfaces. So if you put an alert beacon and activate it at high in a uh, hallway that was all tile and hard surfaces, you know, you'd have issues with really a, a loud piercing sound. And when we do the demo, you'll hear it coming through that uh, it is very loud. And we've actually got our demo system set on low. But what that'll do is that'll take the highest highs and turn them down just for that specific device. So when high is selected uh, for your, your profile for an emergency, that turns that one down and kind of takes it down a notch uh, so that you're not um, deafening your, your occupants in smaller areas that you need to put that device. Interesting uh, things related to that. The serial port on the back here uh, integrates with our LED marquee, drives the message from the beacon up to the LED marquee, and also uh, to our uh, text-to-speech devices. Here's a uh, quick blurb from the uh, the codes. I mentioned that NFPA was a big uh, has a, a big influence on development of mass notification codes in building. Uh, chapter 24 actually highlights the uh, the alert beacon. Uh, it's a as a uh, wall mounted message display with integral LED mo uh, LEDs and sounders. Uh, keys to it is audio visual uh, provides um, the uh, the, to the the word alert. So you'll see a lot of the, uh, the strobes nowadays coming out uh, for your newer systems. Instead of saying fire, they'll say alert. Uh, you know, uh, alert us and, and the codes really influence some of that. Uh, and the solution offers greater intelligibility than uh, a conventional public address system and is, practi is practical for retrofitting older facilities with a reliable wireless and wired option. So, so it provides you the ability to, to very clearly provide that message uh, to your building occupants.
at a very cost-effective means. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and shift gears, and we'll uh, we'll do a uh, a, uh, a demo where we'll uh, activate the the alert beacon. Uh, we'll go ahead and log in to the user console. We'll activate it a couple different ways, and uh, then I'll I'll even dig a little bit deeper into uh, you know activating the alert system and, and really managing some of the details you can manage of the alert beacon uh, in your activations. So. If this is your first time seeing the alerts interface, the, on the left here is our, our web console. So this could be accessed by any PC within your organization. If you have a VPN into the network, uh, you can you can access this from home. Uh, really, it depends on how security deploys it, on how widely you can access this. But basically, any web browser you can go to your computer. If you've got the credentials to log in, which I just did, you're able to go in and activate uh, the messages based upon your login and, and roles and restrictions. The on the right here is actually our uh, our uh, mobile app, and that provides you uh, a view into uh, the presets uh, that are are set up uh, that are set up with uh, with the alert system. So the fastest way to activate our system is to uh, is through a preset. Uh, well, actually, panic buttons are fastest, uh, uh, but uh, preset is your next fastest either through the mobile app or through the uh, the web browser. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, before I activate. Uh, go ahead and uh, bring up the the webcam, which you'll see as part of the screen. Now uh, it comes up kind of small on the one corner on the side potentially. Uh, if you want to get a little bit larger view, you can resize your uh, your screen share to get a larger view of the uh, the equipment. We're going to go ahead and uh, zoom in there and uh, and get a get a better view of that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a message. Let's do a uh, um, what's a good one to use? Uh, bomb threat. We'll go ahead and uh, activate that. And we've built that ahead of time to be able to activate. 30 minutes. We can see skins are online. Alertus desktop uh, is also going to activate behind me here. And uh, uh, I'm also going to. It looks like I need to bump back in to bring up my uh, uh, my mobile. You can also see here bomb threats here. You can get substantially similar information uh, out of the, the mobile app. So whether you're using an Apple and Android device, you're still getting the information related to what's the message. You can modify that potentially, which devices are available, devices are available. You're able to then uh, go through down and activate. I'm going to go ahead and activate. Uh, that will set the message active, and you'll see the devices going off between our uh, desktop, LED marquees, uh, beacons, and then we'll also receive a uh, text-to-speech announcement uh, that will announce it. Now I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge and silence the bomb threat has been reported on the university ground. Seek shelter away from doors and windows. Once safely sheltered, await further instructions. So I, I'm sure that was. To silence that, that probably quieted things down. Uh, the only one I couldn't silence was the one in the outdoor enclosure that you see. But uh, I was able to silence those uh, and then went ahead and uh, canceled the message uh, there. Uh, but when I silenced those, I also acknowledged the uh, the uh, message on those devices and that reports back, which we'll we'll show you in uh, in some of the reports once we get a little bit uh, next level deeper. So as always, we always want to issue an all clear whenever we issue something like that so people return to normal uh, operation. Here I'm going to go ahead and uh, in the mobile app issue that. So you'll see the devices, alert beacons, uh, some of the other services that we're going to activate. And then I can go ahead and activate that. Uh, it confirms activation. Uh, you'll see it coming up on the console. And then our all clear is issued. And again, I'll, I'll silence some of these devices. And also, uh, I'll acknowledge the uh, the desktop here, and you'll you'll be able to see that that in the report. All clear. The emergency condition is over. Return to normal activities. So that gives you an idea of uh, you know different activation modes. I'm going to go ahead and jump into custom activation. Uh, you would build your presets ahead of time in the same way, but also if you had to on the fly. For a really unique emergency, you could uh, build your message. 
Uh, you can select any of the predetermined, um, but maybe you need to change it. Uh, has been reported on the premises. All right, that's too generic. I want to go ahead and say uh, at at the Lotus headquarters office, proceed immediately to the nearest available exit and vacate the building. Uh, rally at uh, the uh, uh, rally uh, rally at uh, location three uh, three in the parking. So. So as you see, even you know, um, I'm not completely under duress, but you know, I got to make sure I, I spell things right. Uh, it's a lot better to have your uh, your presets built out or or have a, a majority of what you want to try to say because it does take a little bit extra time to enter it in, customize it. But what you'll see here also is um, that I'm customizing this, and uh, <coughs> the text to speech will pick this up. The desktop, all those things will pick it up and be able to pick up that customization on the fly. Here again, you can target where you want to do it, send it. You can create anything related to floors, buildings. Uh, you know, it could be just your security desks. You can also uh, activate specific units, or there's a, a map-based uh, activation. Uh, so you can see there's some desktops, beacons uh, here in the uh, the Alertus headquarters office, uh, and you can activate that way as well. So I'm going to jump back, leave it in all. Duration, you can do anything minutes, days. Uh, and this last piece is really your your ability to uh, to uh, focus in. And when you select the alert beacon uh, for activation, it brings up all the settings and controls you have of the alert beacon. So you've got initial setting, a long-term setting. So you can say initial, initially I want it for the first 10 seconds, I want it to be silent. Well, actually, let's do medium. Uh, I want... You know, you can select any different tones. Uh, I want this uh, SOS and the interval. That's how fast it goes. So if you select uh, 250 milliseconds, it's going to be very, very high pitch, very, very uh, quick. The different uh, um, blinking patterns. You can also have it set the, the time between blinking pattern. So because I did that very quick, let's do uh, a very quick uh, blinking. And then we can again have it go silent for the long-term setting. So after 10 seconds. Uh, you know, it's got here continuous beep. Well, well I'm going to go ahead and silence that, so that's not going to do. Uh, I still want the uh, the visual, so I still want it to glow after that. Um, but I want it to to glow every uh, five seconds, so it's noticeably different than every ten seconds. Uh, so we could also activate the LED marquee and the text to speech. If I wanted to use the alternate LED color, the green, I could. Uh, this this is a, a pretty serious emergency. I want that to to stay. Uh, red. If I wanted to enable or activate other devices uh, like the door locks, unlock the doors, open the gate to the, the employee parking lot to allow everybody to evacuate and leave appropriately, <coughs> you can also uh, activate those devices that are downstream or connected to the alert beacon through contact closures and other means as well. So uh, that gives you an idea and you can build this into your profiles and activations on depending on the emergency. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate this and you'll notice I'll, I'll Kind of be quiet for a little bit. We've just got the alert beacon. I didn't select desktops, so your desktops won't be activating. You can pull up your activation alert beacons, confirm the, the settings one more time. So we're just doing LED marquee and text to speech. I'm going to go ahead and give it the 10 seconds or so, so that you can uh, hear that it, the sound and the flash pattern, see that control, and then it'll drop into the silence, and uh, you'll hear the text to speech as well. So I'm going to send that message. You'll see that message goes active. And uh, and we'll uh, initiate the, uh, the alert system as well. So we've got the beacons going off, uh, the LED marquee, and then uh, the text-to-speech as well. Let me jump in. And, and uh, within the reporting, you can also see all the settings that you that, that were activated. So if you do an activation, it doesn't it doesn't go quite according to plan. You can go to the activation, expand it out. Say you know what was there something that I did wrong here? You can see that the alert beacon was included. Uh, go to long uh, long term settings. Um, 
you know, and check into those kind of things. You can also uh, view device activation. So I'll go back to the one where I did a, uh, where I uh, actually activated and acknowledged all those devices. So you can see our alert beacons and uh, desktops activated very quickly. If you've got a larger system, that'll be mapped over time. You can see, again, uh, you know, a, a CSVR exportable version, date stamps on when they were activated. Uh, you've also got the ability to go in and, and look at acknowledgement. So I acknowledge uh, the beacons. I also acknowledge the, uh, the uh, uh, desktop. So you can see within the first 30 seconds, three alert beacons were acknowledged. Uh, the desktops, again, you've got timestamps of where and which ones were acknowledged as well. I also mentioned that uh, the alert system is fully monitored. So um, you don't really, you, it's best to test on a monthly or quarterly basis, more for employee training, awareness, those kind of things. But it's not really mandatory to be able to know the status of your system because our system is fully monitored. So you can see these four alert beacons uh, behind us in the, in the demo are up, available, ready to receive a message. Uh, also, you've got a desktop uh, ready to receive a message. These in red are not available, not programmed anymore, so that we're offline. So you know that there's a number of these that are no longer connected to the system. If they should be, you go. You want to go ahead and uh, troubleshoot those to find out if they've been unplugged or, or what, what the issue is with those. Uh, you can set this report up to either, uh, you can view it on, on the uh, user console, or you can have it emailed to you on a regular basis, or uh, provide an exception. So if a beacon goes offline for more than a couple minutes, uh, you can get a, a notification to investigate. So. Uh, the supervision is really <laughs> key to uh, managing the system and making sure it's constantly available and ready to activate. Uh, so at, at this point, I'll uh, go ahead and then jump back into the presentation and uh, turn it on into Jamie uh, to uh, moderate the uh, the Q and A section. Uh, close down all our need the camera, and uh, we'll go ahead and go through Q and A, and she'll also uh, cover additional webinars that are uh, expected in the future as part of this series. Great, thanks so much, Ryan. Uh, so we now like to open up the floor for any questions you may have. Feel free to use that questions or chat box um, to enter those in and we'll get to as many as we have time for. I see that we've had a number of questions come in, so again, feel free to, to type those in um, and we'll and we'll address those. Um, so Ryan, the first question uh, really kind of gets into the usability of the alert beacon. Um, the question coming in from our attendee is, is it possible to connect my organization's alert beacon to, say, a local police station, a police office? Maybe it's a college campus and they want to connect to campus police, for example. It is, absolutely. Uh, now, you can either put the uh, alert beacon device in the uh, either your 911 center or the first responders or, um, or even the, the police station, that kind of thing. And the alert system can go out over the Internet uh, just as if it was on, on your network and send that message uh, across the internet. Uh, our, my team a lot of times will go out and do demos. Uh, our our, uh, our uh, other resellers and and, uh, and those that, that rep the alerts product can actually do a demo <laughs> anywhere they have an internet connection. So yes, uh, with the right settings uh, within your, your system, you can send that message even off your, uh, your corporate network to other locations. Uh, we've had customers uh, do that to notify authorities very quickly before even that 911. Uh, we've had customers put, um, there's actually uh, a number of, uh, an association down in Texas where there's a number of refineries, they've actually put alert beacons in local schools in case there was a, uh, a spill or a, uh, a release of uh, you know, dangerous gases, they would be able to activate from their organization schools of any kind of chemical threat or those kind of things. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility on uh, where you put that alert beacon because it's a network connected device. And network, depending on how your, your IP sets it up, can mean internet. So it could be anywhere in the world. Great. So thinking more about the alert beacon, uh, our next question concerns how the system is set up. Um, specifically, is there a maximum number of potential input and or output devices for a single alert beacon? Uh, very good question. Uh, there's uh, Two contact closures input and two output. So you can trigger up the two uh, uh, non-network connected devices or, or systems and, and or receive inputs like a panic button or uh, a status of a fire alarm or something like that per alert beacon. Uh, we've also, we've had requests for a lot more, you know, of those interfaces to be available. So we also have a product that's uh, recently released which 
is a uh, contact closure bridge that converts any kind of contact closure, whether you need uh, 6, 12, 18, 36 of these uh, inputs converted and, and brought into the system and, and then a, a notification trigger based upon those unique inputs, we do have a solution that, that will cover that. So uh, the alert beacon is great for, uh, for, for selected locations and those kind of things as well as displaying. Uh, but we also have, if you've got a, uh, a very, uh, you know, contact closure hardware integration specific need, we've got that product available as well. Great. Now thinking about the system as a whole, um, how it's set up, our next question really concerns um, how the application's hosted, utilizing potentially an on-site server, um, is it hosted remotely, et cetera? Absolutely. Uh, the uh, primary way our customers deploy the Lotus system is that the, the software actually runs within their network on either a uh, server or a virtual machine. Uh, virtual machines by far the most uh, popular because it's very quickly to install, uh, get started, and a backup that falls in and fits into the, uh, the IT procedures very well. Uh, one of the reasons why a lot of our customers deploy the software on site is uh, that um, they're able to keep that inside their network. Uh, our software a lot of times is connected to every desktop for desktop notification. While we've gone through all the certifications with the, uh, the DOD, we, do, uh, we take security very, uh, very, um, very seriously. Uh, a lot of organizations are more comfortable with the Alertus software doing the communications in their network versus from a hosted site. Uh, it could be a, in a, a hosted, ver hosted location, uh, depending on how your company uh, deploys um, your, your server resources and, and systems. So um, really could be either, but generally uh, the, our, our customers, uh, when they look at the system, see how easy it is to install and support, they, they install that uh, on one of their local resources. Now thinking about how the alert beacon or maybe even the alert system more broadly interfaces with different emergency communication devices, um, this particular um, individual is asking, how does the alert beacon or the system as a whole interface over Cisco VoIP phones or other types of um, desk-based phones? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, for uh, for uh, Cisco specifically, we have developed to uh, their, their phone sets and uh, the communication manager to be able to uh, notify to the desk set. Uh, be able to put a text message on that desk set and then uh, play a wave file or a tone to get their, their attention. Uh, we've done it very cost effectively as well because we're just focused on for emergency notification. Uh, there's others out there that do it that it gets very expensive very quickly, uh, but they've got all kinds of bells and whistles that go way beyond uh, emergency notification. Uh, so we we're able to provide a very uh, cost effective solution to be able to target those messages to those phones. <laughs> If you've got a system that uh, is either an older version uh, that, that isn't supported or is one of the many manufacturers that are out there, uh, we've also got an ability to interface with that, that, sound, that system and do a, a text-to-speech paging announcement to your paging groups. So we'll actually program to be able to uh, call into that system, put in the password, and then make that announcement over the, uh, the paging groups as well. So, Systems going back even you know five, ten, fifteen years. Sometimes you'll see uh, that have paging groups. We're able to do a text-to-speech announcement to those paging groups. So really, we've got an answer to uh, to integrate your uh, your sound your your phone system, whether it's a you know, state-of-the-art Cisco system uh, today or any of the lineage or uh, or other uh, systems. Now, one thing that we've talked about a little bit is the fact that the Alerta system is very flexible, very customizable. Um, in particular, um, an organization can set up any number of triggers that could essentially activate the Alerta system. Uh, this particular question um, is asking, can an organization essentially build their own contact closure device? Uh, more specifically, does the alert beacon need, say, for example, the contact to be closed for a certain amount of time uh, before it can actually trigger that event? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, the, uh, the, the alert beacon uh, just looks for that uh, normally open contact closure to trigger. Once that triggers, it doesn't have to have a time, uh, timer on it or anything. Once that triggers, uh, the beacon immediately senses that, and then it communicates it over the network back to, uh, back to the, uh, the software, which then triggers a preset. Uh, if you needed multiple uh, contact closures, as we mentioned, uh, we can 
provide a, a bridge that makes that communication over uh, to the, the network and back to the software over the network. Um, and, and yeah, any kind of contact closure device uh, could trigger a preset. Uh, we've seen anything as you know water sensors and data centers that trigger a preset that notif sends a notification <laughs> out. Uh, you know, if you've got a lot of refrigeration, the uh, ammonia is used in those systems. Ammonia as a gas will kill people almost instantly in a high concentration. They've got sensors; those those can generate be uh, generate contact closures. They can also trigger the alert system. Uh, access control. Um, we've seen uh, different systems that man that monitor uh, temperatures in uh, hospitals that are say that have say uh, transplant organs or tissues that are used as part of research. If that hits a certain threshold, uh, those those systems have contact closures, but you can wire those into the, the alert, nearest alert beacon or bri or, or contact cl closure bridge for notification. So yeah, there's pretty much anything you can build on your end that'll generate a, a contact closure that will will uh, close that contact will generate a message and preset uh, programmed on our our side in the alert system. Uh, now we have time for a couple of more couple more questions. Uh, please do submit those, and, and again, we'll we'll get to as many as we have time for up until the one o'clock mark. Uh, really quickly, uh, looking at the slide, just wanted to um, remind the folks who are attending today's session about uh, a number of additional webinars that we have coming up. Um, some really great sessions. Um, in particular, uh, in January, we're going to be focusing more specifically on NFPA 72 compliance. We're going to do a deeper dive on that handbook, on the codes um, that are associated with that, looking at not only what NFPA 72 um, designates as requirements for um, integrating, say, emergency communication components into, say, fire panel interface, uh, but specifically how Alertus complies with those. Um, how we work with, with our customers, with organizations, to make sure that they are in full compliance um, of those codes and mandates. Uh, we have another great webinar coming up in February that's going to focus more specifically on best practices in reviewing, updating, and testing your emergency preparedness plan. Uh, looking to either enhance or kind of build out uh, maybe a process that you currently have in, in place. Uh, looking to really implement some best practices there. Um, and then finally in March, uh, we're going to have one of our uh, customers actually come on and speak to some of the protocols and processes that they have in place uh, in this particular instance. Uh, it will be Florida State University speaking to um, their specific emergency preparedness uh, campus-wide. Uh, so please uh, check out the link below, uh, learn, learn a little bit more about the webinars and um, you know, register for anything you may be interested in. Um, also, just very quickly, uh, if you would like additional information, uh, feel free to email us at marketing at alertus.com. We can also, also share a uh, recording of the webinar post um, the session. And then again, we have uh, a lot of really good information on our website and then some basic contact information, again, if you're looking to uh, get in touch with us directly. Now, I see we've got a couple of additional questions come in, so uh, we'll see if we can get to those really quickly. Um, Ryan, the next question is talking about kind of a campus environment. Um, you know, a lot of, for example, higher education institutions have uh, multiple locations, multiple campuses. So the question is, is it possible to send an emergency alert utilizing the alert beacon or components of the alert system to send out an alert to all or select locations depending on what the needs are? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you can either build your presets or, as you saw on the fly, using a mapping interface or uh, selecting different groups that you've already grouped the alert peak into uh, to be able to get that notification <laughs> targeted to the right, you can all or targeted to the right locations based upon that emergency. Uh, so uh, when you install the alert beacon, we know exactly where that's connected to the network, uh, which building that's in, uh, and we administer the system so that that's in a group. So you can target and select that uh, appropriately. And you know, if it's a satellite campus, all you need is some kind of uh, network or internet connectivity out to that site, uh, and that message can then originate from your main campus out to the uh, remote site. Uh, so really, anywhere your network extends to, uh, and or the internet is a, is a way you can send the uh, notification out to those sites, those different buildings, uh, very efficiently. And then absolutely, uh, those beacons can be grouped infinitely in any number of groups. 
uh, both uh, physically located, which I've been talking about quite a bit, but you can also put logical groups together where, say you want the alert beacon to go off at every security desk or with universities at the RA front desk for, uh, for buildings, those kind of things. Um, you can you can go ahead and uh, create groups, and a alert beacon can uh, belong to multiple groups. So it might be uh, might bring, uh, belong to all of your residence halls, but then also be uh, in another group that just that one beacon in the residence hall goes off the security or front desk. So there's really infinite number of uh, grouping capabilities for the alert beacon to target your message. Now, on our next question, going back to the alert beacon, Ryan, um, this particular individual is hoping to learn a little bit more about the types of devices and functionality that can be connected to or interfaced with the alert beacon. Um, can, so can you maybe um, highlight a few of those and maybe speak to some of the resources that we have available in terms of um, sharing that type of information with people, something that may be a more robust or comprehensive list in mm -hmm. terms of what's going to connect to that alert beacon and, and what's going to kind of enhance their, their emergency communication. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really, um, there's very few things that uh, if there's a contact closure interface, that kind of thing, that, that won't or you can't connect to the alert beacon and come up with a uh, notification. So, um, you know, some of our other things <laughs> like uh, digital signage, there's, we haven't run into very many, if, if any, digital signage systems that we don't have any way of interfacing with. So uh, there's, you know, kind of the sky's the limit. Uh, whatever you can think up, bring that to our engineers, and we'll, we'll work with you to, to to confirm that that will be supported. But, um, you know, some of the examples, as I mentioned, of uh, integrations, uh, we've seen, you know, a, a contact closure trigger, a, a gate system to open or close based upon either lockdown or uh, or evacuation. Uh, we've seen individual uh, doors that will trigger an alert when those doors are open. Uh, that's a contact closure that's wired to the nearest beacon. Uh, we've seen access control systems actually be in activation mode for the alert system where, you know, access control systems, sometimes they have a, uh, a way to badge in, put a, a, a pin code in, and, and activate either a lockdown or a different scenario. So if uh, you've already got that in place and your, your employees, your security guards are trained that way, well, let's leverage that as an activation point. Uh, so that when they badge in, put in the, the 911 code, say, which then is locked down, uh, that translates over to the system, to the alerted system, either as a, uh, a web posting through the network or as a contact closure, uh, and do the lockdown notification through all the devices, that kind of thing. So uh, really the sky's the limit there in different options, sensors, uh, you know, even at its basic, most basic, that contact closure, we use that for our uh, our wired panic buttons that go along with the alert beacon. So basically what you're doing is you're pushing the button in, it's tripping the contact, which then is associated with uh, with that preset, and then uh, notifying as you've built it for that specific panic button. Uh, lastly, inbound, uh, you know, fire alarms are a good example. Fire alarms going back even in the, you know, the beginning of fire alarms, uh, have a contact closure because they're very intensely hardware. So any of your fire alarms, if you wanted to know that the fire alarm went off in the building, you could wire that to the nearest alert beacon. Uh, the codes allow for that 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 capability uh, without having to reinspect the panel and then receive a message either in your, your uh, operation center, you can even have a message go out through that building uh, to that the, the fire uh, has been triggered. Lastly, um, you know, strobe systems, if you've got any of those installed, siren systems, we can activate those as well with the contact closure. Uh, so there's there's all kinds of different, uh, both inbound and outbound devices, ideas. Just bring them, bring them to us, uh, and uh, we'll find a way to make it happen. Excellent. Uh, we have time for one more quick question. Um, Ryan, our next question is really kind of speaking to alert beacons and how they are supervised or monitored. Uh, more specifically, um, you know, kind of speaking to maybe the battery backup some of the options for how individuals can know if that device is in fact online, offline, um, if there are issues with the device, et cetera. Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, the aspects of the alert beacon that we, uh, we monitor, whether it's online or not, we also collect information about its firmware, software, uh, its uh, network IP address so you know exactly where that's plugged in or, or if you refer to an IT person, they'll, they'll know exactly where it's plugged into their network. Uh, we also monitor the status of those batteries. so. Uh, there's a constant trickle charge to those batteries, but uh, if, you know, four or five years later, those <laughs> batteries have been there for a while, you know, we know those don't last forever. Uh, 
you'll they'll start to lose their uh, their voltage, and we'll see that in the reports. You can set thresholds that will uh, notify you if batteries hit a certain uh, uh, voltage threshold, which means they need to be replaced. Um, we monitor the uh, the peripherals. So if an LED marquee or a text to speech device is attached to that, we also monitor a report on that. So maybe the beacon's still up, but if uh, you get uh, a, a null or a uh, you know a uh, failed link to your LED marquee, you know that you need to check out your LED marquee at that location as well. Uh, so we, we're constantly monitoring that. And every time uh, you know we kind of check in with the device, uh, we're getting that information back and reporting that. So you can bring up your daily digest where you've got a real-time report, or you can have that emailed to you on a regular basis. Great. Thanks so much, Ryan. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us uh, today for the webinar. Um, again, if you find you have additional questions, please feel free to email us. We can also provide video recordings from today's session. Uh, just email us at marketing at alertus.com. Again, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on one of our future webinars.